Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial from Biology with Shalini and in this video I am going to talk about purine biosynthesis and its precursor amino acids. I have talked about purines in my previous video. So if you want to know about purine structure, its role and importance, then you can watch that video also. I have given the link in the description box below. So coming to the structure, this is the structure of purine ring and I have told you in my previous video that numbering in this ring will start counterclockwise okay it will start from here like this and in this ring clockwise so first nitrogen of this first ring is given by aspartate second carbon formyl tetrahydrofolate um, you can remember it like carbon number 2 and carbon number 8 okay c28 they are given by formyl tetrahydrofolate here donor is formyl tetrahydrofolate similarly nitrogen 3 nitrogen number 9 so nitrogen 39 they are donated by glutamine similarly carbon number 4 5 carbon number 45 c45 sorry and nitrogen 7 C45 N7 they are donated by glycine and this carbon of sixth number it is given by bicarbonate from tetrahydrofolate okay so it is quite easy to remember if you remember it like this N39 C28 C45 N7 so a clear picture will come to your mind if you remember this numbering <clears throat> so this is modified amino acids or amino acids as donors of carbon and nitrogen of purine. Now coming to purine biosynthesis, the process of pu uh, purine biosynthesis is very tightly or highly regulated because if it is not regulated, if it will not be regulated, then different concentrations, different amount of ATP or GTP will be formed in cell and it will be very fatal to our cell how and why i'll tell you in my next video okay so as of now you can remember that the process should be and it is indeed a very highly tightly regulated process in the first stage ribose 5 phosphate gets converted into imp and in second stage imp gets converted into atp and gtp by branched pathway this ribose 5-phosphate is coming from pentose shunt pathway and this is a de novo biosynthesis okay this process is happening in liver if the process if purine biosynthesis is taking place in rbc or wbc it will take place by a salvage pathway so as of now i'm talking about de novo biosynthesis which is occurring in liver so in this structure we can see that ribose 5-phosphate gets converted into PRPP with the help of enzyme ribose phosphate, ribose phosphate pyrophosphokinase. This is the enzyme which is converting ribose 5-phosphate into PRPP pyrophosphokinase. Okay, and this enzyme is inhibited by the presence of ADP and GDP if they are present in very high concentration because if they are already present at very higher amount in very high concentration in the cell then it will lead to formation of ATP and GTP and as I have told you earlier that ATP and GTP ka high amount is very fatal for our cells. So this process needs to be shut down if ADP and GDP they are present in very high amount. All right. So thus we can say that this process is very highly or tightly regulated. So after converting ribose 5-phosphate into PRPP, PRPP gets converted into 5-phosphoribosyl amine with the help of enzyme amidophosphoryl transferase. This enzyme is activated by the presence of PRPP. Okay. And this enzyme is also inhibited allosterically by the presence of AMP, ADP, ATP or GMP, GDP, GTP. Okay. 
and the, this process of activation is called feed forward activation okay because this enzyme is stimulated by the presence of prpp so this is feed forward activation and this step is the first committed step of purine biosynthesis okay to kya hota hai suppose this is an enzyme and this is its allosteric site and this is is active sites so if prpp is present at high amount it will bind here enzyme binds here this is active site so this enzyme gets activated and prpp will be converted into 5 phosphoribosyl amine but if adp gtp amp atp if they are present at very high amount then they will bind here at allosteric site and if these inhibitors bind at allosteric site it will alter it will change the shape of active site and this prpp will not able to it will not be able to bind here at active site so this process will shut down okay so this is allosteric inhibition where inhibitor binds at allosteric site and alters the shape of the active site of the enzyme okay so this process comes to a halt or this process gets shut down so this prpp gets converted into 5 phosphoribosyl amine by activating the enzyme and one more thing i want to tell you that km as we know that it is the affinity of enzyme for substrate or simply affinity for substrate so in normal condition intracellular concentration cell ke andar jo concentration hai prpp ki that is very low okay suppose km of enzyme is 10 to iska prpp ka concentration jo hai cell ke andar normal conditions mein bahut low hoga so it will not be able to activate the enzyme okay so jab ek bar prpp ka amount aur concentration increase kar jata hai then it binds to enzyme and it speed up the rate of reaction okay so after this 5 phosphoribosyl amine gets converted into imp and here branched pathway starts in branched pathway another level of inhibition is there this is adenine branch and this is guanine branch in adenine branch amp is competitive inhibitor with imp for the production of adenylosuccinate and this gmp is competitive inhibitor inhibitor to imp for the production of xmp in addition to inhibition and activation the synthesis of adenine and guanine nucleotides is coordinated okay for the synthesis of adenylosuccinate gtp act as a co substrate with imp for the production of adenylosuccinate and this atp act as co substrate with xmp for the production of gmp so that gtp production is regulated on the basis of amount of atp present here and the atp's production is regulated on the basis of amount of gtp present here so we can say that they are highly or tightly regulated two end products of purine synthesis they cross regulate each other to produce atp and gtp in sufficient or in required amount uh this is the closed picture of branched pathway imp adenylosuccinate synthetase is converting this into adenyl succinate and uh, gtp is acting as a co substrate with imp for the production of adenylosuccinate all right and atp here is acting as a co substrate with xmp for the production of gmp now some points to remember that prpp is the source of sugar for purine nucleotides and it is synthesized from ribose 5 phosphate ribose 5 phosphate comes from pentose shunt pathway okay 
all purine nitrogens come from amino acids, glutamine aspartate and glycine. First committed step is PRPP, conversion of PRPP into 5-phosphoribosyl uh, uh, amine. The enzyme catalyzing the first committed step that is PRPP amidotransferase is feedback inhibited by the presence of AMP, ADP, ATP at one inhibitory site and by GMP, GDP, GTP at another site on the enzyme. Enzyme is also positively activated by feed forward activation uh, PRPP binds to enzymes active site and activates it and this is called feed forward activation. The branch point in purine biosynthesis is IMP with the help of branch path pathway it will make ATP and GTP. The conversion of IMP into ATP or GTP is highly regulated. AMP or GMP they are inhibited they inhibit first step which makes IMP to form AMP and GMP respectively. ATP is required to synthesize GMP and GTP is required to synthes synthesize AMP and it will lead to the formation of ATP and GTP. So this is all about purine biosynthesis.